Today on Tech Tuesday, we're gonna teach you how to keep your fluids in your buggy where they belong. Let's start off with static fluid, stuff that's not getting turbulence and stuff like that, like the differentials or your transfer case. Well, you've got fluid in the bottom of your differential, right? And as it's driving, it's kind of mixing around and you have to vent that off. Well, if you use a regular style vent on the top of the diff cover, just sitting right there, uh, sometimes that oil can come out or more likely you can go through a creek crossing and then water will get in. So how do we deal with that? How are we going to stop that from happening? Well, all of the fluids that are in those different scenarios can be easily contained with what's called the FATS system. And the FAT is basically fuel air trap system. And what that means is it's basically using a line, like a vent line, as a P-trap. And, and no matter which way the fluid becomes inside of whatever cavity you have, there's always going to be the line at the highest point. And it's kind of hard to explain, so I figured I would just make a little demonstration using some liquid inside of a box, and this could be anything. This could be a fuel cell, this could be your, your transmission pan, this could be uh, your differentials. Regardless of the situation, the dynamics are going to be the same and the concept is going to be the same. So let's talk about fuel cells to start off. Let's say this is your fuel cell, okay? Most of your fuel cells are going to have a vent in one corner. Well, what happens if you have a vent in one corner? If you have a vent in this corner over here and you start going up a hill, guess what's going to happen? It's going to take fluid and it's going to pour it out of that vent all over the trail. And you say, well, that's what rollover valves are for. But I can tell you from my personal experience and seeing it my whole life on the trail, rollover vents only work well if the vehicle's completely over and that little ball bearing actually plugs the hole. But if you're an off-roader and you're sitting here at an angle kind of going up the trail like this, that ball doesn't always plug that hole off and you just pour fluid all over the trail. So the very first thing you need to do whenever you're venting anything is try to vent from the center. Because what that means is that no matter which way you tilt, you basically have to be upside down before that fluid gets to the vent. So if you have a tank that's vented in the corner, very first step, put it right there in the middle. Same thing with your motor, transmission, transfer case, all that stuff. Now, Certain things, like your transmission, they have a vent hole that's basically where it is. Like, you can't change that, right? It's coming off of the passenger side front if you're in a J GM, like a T8 350 or a 400. So, in that scenario, we're still going to use the FAT system, but we can't change the venting location. And because of that, we have some pretty cool tools. Here are some of the tools that we have to keep your fluids where they belong. These are called vent bellows. They work really well for any type of gearbox, something that doesn't have a lot of expansion because of heat. These work for differentials, for transfer cases, and work really well for pretty much anything that's just regular gear on gear contact. Um, they work really well because you can just plug them directly on the axle, and then as the fluid expands and contracts, these things basically move in and out just ever so slightly and allow for that fluid to expand and therefore the air to expand and it pushes this in and out. What's great about these is that they're super easy. You don't have to worry about routing little lines everywhere. They plug directly on top of the transfer case or the differential, and they're out of the way. You don't have to worry about how much suspension flex you have or anything like that. It's a one and done simple way to go. Another thing that we have is all these little, little filters right here. Now these are really cool for a bunch of different systems, but they're really for more viscous systems. So uh, these also work really well for transfer cases. They work really well for differentials, transmission fluids. Um, but you wouldn't want to really use this on something that has a really thin viscosity like fuel because it allows particles or, or fluid to move through it very easily, but anything that's really viscous, it gets stuck and then slowly drips. So this is a really good fail safe. Even when we use the fat system at the end of the line, we always use these just in case we have some type of a failure. Um, it keeps the fluid from being able to pour out on the ground and also it keeps any type of contaminants from being able to make its way backwards up into the system. We have these in 16th inch little stubbies and 16th inch regular. We've got them in eighth inch, we've got them in quarter, three eighths, half inch, and these big boys three quarter. Now you can get these right on our website and these work really well for supercharged engines. So if you've got your PCV system just vented off to air, this works really well for allowing 
any type of uh, gas pressure to go through, but then any type of oil or contaminants or anything like that from the outside environment, like your pressure washer or something like that, keeps it from trying to go in. So that's a great solution for that situation. Let's take a look at a scenario that we see all the time on the trail. You've got a regular fuel cell, you've got your little uh, vent line sticking straight up, it goes to the roll cage, right? You're off road, you're having a good time, you get a little too crazy, you flip over and guess what happens? That's gas. That's gasoline, that's transmission fluid, that's gear oil, it's pouring all over the ground. Don't be that guy. Don't put yourself in a situation to have a fire. Don't be the guy that tears up the landscape by putting a whole bunch of oil and stuff on the trail. Don't be the guy that gets the place shut down because the EPA comes in and sees it. Don't be that guy. This is the way that you're going to want to plumb your vent line in any one of these systems. Uh, first of all, you want to make sure that your vent line is directly in the middle. We talked about that a second ago. You may, Don't put it out here on the outside. Next thing you want to do is you want to come up and you want to go over to the outside of the tank. This is actually a lot simpler. This whole fat system is really, really simple if you think about how the mechanics work, right? So first, we have to come to the outside of the tank, all right? So that's in this direction. Now the line is farther than the liquid can ever go. Now we're going to come around the side of the tank. We're going to do the same thing. Bam, just like that right there. Now we're going to go around the back side of the tank and we're going to put another couple little tie downs. No big deal here. Now we're going to go around this side. And now we've got almost all of our bases covered. So now, no matter which way the fuel cell goes, except for upside down, you're covered because the fluid can never get as high as this line is. Basically, the fluid, if I go this way, will never be as high as this line over here. If I go this way, it'll never be as high as this line. Forwards, backwards, left and right. The line's always gonna be the highest spot. Now we're gonna come off of this face and we're gonna go down. And if we do that, and we come down here, when you flip this over, now the line that's sticking down is your high spot. So no matter what happens, the fluid is not gonna come out of the box because the line is higher than the fluid at all times. This is called the FATS system. And the FATS system basically uses regular techniques like gravity and the air being trapped inside the system to stop that from happening. It's very similar to a P-trap. Now. We're going to talk a little bit about how to do it on your engine because this is something that we see a lot of guys failing at and we're going to help you out. On your engine, a lot of times whenever you're climbing a hill, you'll end up sucking a bunch of oil into the intake. And people are always asking me, how do I stop that from happening? Well, the first thing that happens is when you start climbing a hill, what do you think's happening to the oil that's inside this engine? Let's, let's pretend like we're going up a hill and this engine is going to tilt backwards. The oil is gonna come back towards the back of the motor as the, as the push rods are pushing up and the oil's splashing all down through here. It's gonna get sucked up by this tube right here and brought right into the intake. This is your PCV system, positive crankcase ventilation. And the PCV system is designed to have a vacuum on top of the heads up here and it sucks all the emissions off the top of the engine and recycles it back into the intake. And the problem is, is if you have the standard setup like this right here, when you start climbing a hill, it's basically sucking directly into the intake. Now, there's a couple things that we can do to make that stop. I've actually taken the valve covers in on an LS motor, you can just swap them. You can take this one, put it up here, put this one back over to here. And therefore, whenever you're climbing a hill, the PCV is sucking from back over here on the top right hand side and it's away from the pickup. The problem with that is in the off chance you try to stick a tire on your passenger front down into a hole, you're gonna have the same problem and suck a bunch of oil into the intake. This hose over here on the passenger side of the vehicle is the crankcase ventilator. Now basically, all it's got is a spot on the air filter to allow fresh air to go into the motor and go through the engine back through the PCV system into the intake. And what that does is it just allows filtered air to go through the motor versus this being just set off to the side or something like that. Now, if both of these were hooked up to a vacuum, you'd basically have a vacuum on the entire engine and that's not what you're wanting. You're just wanting a good pull. But what happens is if you flip over, guess what's gonna happen? Oil is going to come to the top of the valve covers and it's gonna come through this tube 
all into your air filter. The same thing that's gonna happen on the PCV system. As soon as you start to flip over, a whole bunch of oil is going to flood into the intake. When you flip it back over, that oil goes down into the intake valves. You go to crank it over, oil goes in the system, hydrolock, bent piston, bent rod, your motor's trashed. You don't wanna be that guy. You definitely don't wanna be the guy paying for a new motor. This is an LS3, and what you'll notice about the LS3 is that the PCV system comes directly off the valley pan. Directly underneath this intake manifold, there's a valley pan, and that valley pan on this LS3 comes directly into the other side of the throttle body plate. So that's a positive crankcase ventilation. That's basically got vacuum on it. Now, what does that look like? That looks a lot like the demonstration we did a minute ago, right? where this is the fluid containment area. So this is like whatever type of thing you've got, if it's a fuel cell or an engine or whatever. And now instead of having the vent over here on the outsides, guess what? We have the vent right here in the middle. So swapping to an LS3 valley pan cover works extremely well because now the only time you're ever gonna suck up a bunch of oil is if you're physically all the way over on your top. If you're on your side or steep angle, front, down, left, right, you're not gonna suck oil because the oil's sloshing over here to the side of the valve covers and still not here in the middle. The only problem with this is that it only works for Gen 4 style LS systems. And if you have an old school 350 or something like that, it's not gonna work for that. So if you do have something different than a Gen 4 scenario, what you can easily do is take your intake manifold off, come down into the valley pan, and go ahead and drill and tap a little spot for a line to come off, and then hook that up into the intake manifold somewhere behind the throttle body so it has vacuum. Then you can port your valve covers directly to air. So if you were just thinking to yourself, man, that's a whole lot of talking, just tell me how to do it. This is exactly how you wanna do it. You wanna take some regular old hose, it doesn't have to be anything special. If you want it to be special, you can. You're gonna come off of your valve cover just like this right here, and you're gonna do the same thing that I showed you in that last demonstration. You're basically gonna come off, you're gonna go around the engine just like this right here, and when you get back over to this spot right here, you're gonna go all the way down to the bottom of the engine. And then you're gonna put this little centered metal filter on the end of it so that you don't get a bunch of contaminants back up and around. And what that does, just like we did in the box a little bit ago, it's gonna contain that fluid inside this hose on a rollover scenario. If you flipped over on your passenger side, some of that oil might go into this hose, but it's not gonna pour all out over the ground. Whenever you tip back up and you start driving, the crankcase ventilation is actually going to draw a vacuum and it's gonna suck that oil right back into the intake. So you don't have to worry about that oil getting all over the ground because naturally, whenever the engine starts back up, you're gonna get a little bit of vacuum and it's gonna pull that oil right back into your valve covers. Now, if you have a boosted application, it's a really good idea to use this system, the fat system, but then end your line into a catch can. And the reason is, is let's say you flip over onto your passenger side. You don't even have to be all the way over, just, just on an angle, and some oil gets in this line. The next time you hit the gas, boosted pressure is going to come inside here, and it's going to take a little bit of that oil, and it's going to push it out. Well, you don't want that oil just going out on the ground. So go ahead and get yourself a catch can so that when you do hit the gas and it pushes that oil out, it contains it versus being that guy that gets oil over the place. I wanted to demonstrate how to do the fat system on a transmission because a transmission is kind of a difficult scenario where basically, you know, it's not exactly a square box like your fuel cell. Well, the, the vent line's gonna come out up here on the top of the transmission. This is a TH400, and your 350s power glides, all that stuff are gonna have a vent that's up there on the top. Now, when you come out of your transmission, all you have to do is go down below the pan, back around in a circle, and then take this hose and come back, back down past the backside of the transmission and put one of our filters on the backside. Now, no matter which way you take the contents of the fluid in this transmission and turn it, whether it's up, down, left, right, the hose is always going to be higher than the contents of fluid inside, and it's gonna keep that fluid inside the transmission where it belongs. Obviously, with your transfer case, you can come off the back of it, you can take your hose, you can do the fat system, keep the fluid where it's supposed to be, but why do all that when you can do something that's even cleaner and just run a vent bellow? These things right here work great. We use them on all of our rigs. They're super clean, super easy. Just take it, stick it on there, put your little zip tie, go four wheeling. On your axle, you can do the fat system just like you would any other type of system. Now in this scenario, it's actually a little bit easier because in an axle, you can come right off this vent right here 
you can come out, you can go up a limit strap or something and come straight back down just below the contents of the uh, differential. And in that scenario, you're basically just doing the fat system, but a little bit different. You're gonna basically make a big P trap out of this line, but why would you do that when you could just basically run this vent bellow? Now, the reason is, is if you're like an ultra four guy and you're running really high speeds for a long period of time, your fluid is going to get cooking inside. And because of that, the gases are gonna expand exponentially. And if you have one of these vent bellows, it's basically gonna keep that gas from being able to escape. And when that happens, it's gonna start pushing fluid out of your seals. But if you're a trail rider, this is the way to go. If you follow these very simple principles, just like that demonstration on that box, come out, go around whatever it is that you're trying to do, then go down to the bottom, you're gonna keep fluids in your vehicle and off the trail. portion that's higher than the fluid contaminant uh, capacity can uh, Contem um, catch cans are a great app um, a great uh, scenario <laughs> and we've got a couple of cool different ways that help that from stopping or whatever that word is that I just messed up damn <laughs> you want to make sure that a you've got your vent line in the middle of the fuel cell and then number two <laughs> sorry you have to do scenario right here the fluid is gonna pour all over my leg because the seal broke up here <laughs> well that sucks <laughs> I don't know what to say about that other than if you have a crappy welder and uh, your fuel cell splits then uh, this isn't gonna work anyways <laughs> oh my god <laughs>